Hey guys, good morning. Um, so I was thinking about something and I thought I'd come on here again and, and share with you guys what I was thinking about just faith. Um, I also keep getting in my my screen right now like this halo of light. So if, if you guys suddenly can't see me, it's a really odd like morning as far as lighting goes. But um, let me see if maybe I can go outside and get better. Get better or worse. Okay. But yeah, I just wanted to share something that was on my... Wow, that, that kind of... Yep, there goes the lighting. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. I'm not allowed to do this live today. Um, but yeah, guys. So I was just thinking about something in my own life right now. I'm going back inside because the lighting is so bad. I can't in the... Sorry. Guys, this has been a morning. It's been 24 hours of heaviness and a bit of what feels like spiritual warfare. This is... I'm never like this, guys. This is never like how my lighting is in my room. But anyway, okay. I'm not going to worry about the lighting. You guys can't see my face for a minute. But, so something that the Lord, I was just talking to the Lord and journaling, and it just, what I was thinking about, I'm so articulate today, guys, sorry, but I was thinking about how when we are waiting on God for something, um, like, um, like miracles or um, how God is going to provide for us, whatever the scenario might be, right, okay? Um, does anybody else do this where we, where we go through, you know, all the possibilities, right? Where we're like Philippians, uh, I think it's Philippians tells us trust in the Lord with all your heart. And well, no, that's Proverbs. Um, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Also be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right? So we know these verses and you know, these verses talk about leaning not on our own understanding, right? The, the natural man understanding that we have in our own flesh okay with what we can see what god can what god can do right versus what he can't well what to us seems outside you know of of what is possible um and so literally i was just praying as i journaled and i was just thinking about like thinking about how god is going to come through for us um you know we just we just hit another issue with our our mortgage. And so, um, you know, we have this situation where I'm like, you know, um, we're going to be basically forced to move and, um, because of, of things right now. And I'm th sitting here thinking, God, you've spoken to me already about things in life. Um, I, I already know because of your faithfulness, the outcome here. And so, and so this is my mind. I'm thinking of all of this is, and this shouldn't be a very long message, but it was like all the realm of possibilities. Okay. The realm of possibilities. And literally I'm thinking, well, there's this scenario. There's this scenario. God, there's this scenario. God, there's this scenario. There's this scenario. And I'm, I'm playing through every scenario. Oh, good morning, Amber. Um, I'm playing through every, every scenario that God could possibly come through in my natural mind understanding, in my head. And I don't think I'm the only one who does this, right? I think that we tend, when we're looking at a situation that seems hopeless, it seems absolutely impossible, we're sitting here looking according to our natural man's mind of what can you do, God? How can you come through for me right now? How can this work out? What is possible? You know, and again, we think, well, this is a likely scenario. This is a likely scenario. This is a likely scenario. These are the ways that you can work, God. These are the ways that you can work, God. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, and the Holy Spirit, and sorry, Ivy's got, Ivy's with Ari out there. She's three, and as soon as she turned three, she turned like, 
child, your worst than two sisters combined. <laughs> so I'm going to have to intervene with them soon. But, you know, when we are, we're, we're thinking about, like, the what God can do, and again, I'm sitting here journaling and audio journaling my thoughts to the Lord and as like a prayer and, and just thinking about it all out loud and I'm thinking about what I'm actually saying and literally it's like all the things that I think are in the realm of possibilities and yet when God operates God can make a donkey talk and God can make the sun stand still in the sky right for his people God can part a Red Sea. What else can God do? God can teleport Philip in Acts. Teleportation is a thing. I had a discussion with a friend once telling him that I wish there was teleportation. And it is a thing. <laughs> so, you know, only through the Holy Spirit, though. We don't know how to teleport. But if the Holy Spirit wants you to teleport, you will teleport. It is in Acts. Okay. But, like, these are the things that God does. Like, God can come through for his people. And in our natural man's mind, we will never figure out the hand of God. We're never going to figure out, like, oh, are you going to do this, God? Is this how you're going to execute it? Aha, I figured you out, God. And then we're like, and, and it doesn't happen. And then the, when he works, though, when he actually does move, it is amazing. You know, I remember when God brought me out of my mom and dad's house, like when God delivered me, I had been praying that God would take me out, that God would adopt me. Um, from the time that I came to know the Lord at, when I was 12, almost 13. But, well, no, I, I think I just turned 12. It was like 12 and a, 12 and a half. It was 12 and a half. And, um, and I started praying. As soon as I had the Holy Spirit, I started praying that God would deliver me, that God would deliver me, that God would deliver me because I was in an abusive home with an abusive mom. Even though a stepfather had passed away, she immediately got remarried. It was still an abusive home. And I prayed and I cried out to the Lord and I met a godly Christian family within a year. And within a year from that, they knew me, they loved me, and God put me on their hearts to adopt me. My dad was nowhere in sight. My biological father was nowhere in sight. And my mom was like the last person on this earth that they would expect that would allow them to do such a thing as adopt me. But we were hard pressed on every side, guys. I was hard pressed on every side. They paid, literally, this family, they paid for us to live in hotels when we were evicted from our home. This is how bad it was. Um, you know, we I had experienced bouts of homelessness when I was a kid, but we literally, this this couple, paid for us to stay in a hotel. Um, I believe it was for two weeks. Hotels are expensive. They paid our way in a hotel for two weeks, and then my mom's like, I can't, you know, I can't um, get a job. I've got all these kids, so they literally took us in their home for a, a month, like my brothers and sisters and I, for the month of June when I was like, fourteen. And then after that, my mom still complained that she couldn't find a job. So again, two more weeks in a hotel. And I tell you what, I was praying fervently that God would do it. And I had found out that my parents were moving to Tucson from Mesa, Arizona. And Mark and, oh, and my parents, <laughs> my parents, they discovered also that, that I was going to be going with my, with my biological parents to Tucson, which was a three hour drive. And they're like, Jen can't do this. She's not going to survive. She's going to end up like her mama if she does that, you know, and my mom was a prostitute, you know, and, and things were not good. And, and I could feel like some of the pull I could feel. I was in that adolescent phase. And I even remember feeling like boys were hitting on me. Boys started hitting on me and I was young and I was impressionable. And, but I prayed that God would deliver me. And when he delivered me, one day, it took him one day to bring about my deliverance. It was so fast, literally court documents, things that would have taken weeks or months. God opened that door for me in a single day. God opened my mom's heart and she said yes to me being adopted within 30 minutes of them offering to take me. 
when she complained about me, she was like, you know, she was complaining about me and, and my dad at the time, or my dad now said, well, we'll take her. <laughs> and that's all he said. And she's like, well, let me think about it. And 30 minutes later, she said yes. And literally it took them. We went to the courts. I was 14 years old. It was a week, a week before I turned 15. And I literally, I agreed to it. My mother agreed to it. My adopted mom agreed to it. We literally signed papers. I said goodbye to my biological mother. Literally in one day, I kissed my brothers and sisters goodbye and I stepped into their vehicle and we drove off. That was the beginning of what God did in my life to move on my behalf. I had no idea. I had every scenario in my head too. I was like, well, maybe I'll move in with my grandpa and grandma in Ohio. Maybe, maybe that's what the Lord's willing for me to do. Maybe God will deliver me in this way. Maybe he'll deliver me in this way, you know, but I knew God was going to deliver me. I knew God was going to take me out of there. I just didn't know how. And in one day, God did it. God did the impossible in my life. And he allowed me to be adopted by a loving Christian family. So, you know, we don't always know how God is going to come through for us. We don't. We, we don't know the mind of God. And we do and we try to put limitations on him based on what we can understand. But again, we sometimes when we when God tells us to rest, and this is where I find myself right now, you know, I need to actively rest. You know, we've got a home to pack. Um but I have to actively rest in him and that rest means even though I don't know my outcome, I, even though I don't know how God is going to swoop down and save our, you know, save us in a situation. Like, you know, even though I don't know how God's going to do it, I've got to stop, get, get out of my head of the realm of possibilities and allow God to be God and allow him, just like he did with the children of Israel, when he, sorry, when he parted the Red Sea, allow him, allow him to move and show forth his glory. And when he moves big, and, and time press, time is, you know, we're pressing time and we're waiting for his hand to move. You know, if he gave us weeks, if he gave us months, if he gave us, that's, that's a natural timetable, right? That's, that's not, we can do that. But when God takes Gideon's army from 33,000 men to 300 men to defeat a massive army, we know that that's only God's hand, Right? When God takes us, you know, removes any ability of our own to accomplish a mission, to save ourselves, and we see the hand of God, we can see his hand big time, right? His glory is massive. Like what we can see that we know that only he did it, that only he could do it. Only he is able, right, to do those things. So I was just really encouraged again as I was praying in my audio journal and thinking about all these things, thinking about what I was doing, that I came out of a place, like I don't even know if I was ever in a place of restfulness because I do, 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 do. I overthink everything in my life. I overthink, God, how? I, I think of the how. It's like, how are you going to do this? How are you going to come through for me? How, how, how? Jen, you're not going to know the how. You just have to give it to the Lord and let him work his wonders. He's done it before. I know God's going to do it again. You know, God is not, you know, and, and we believe in him, right? We believe that he is able, you know? So, yeah. So just, if you're in a situation today, keep, keep trusting in the Lord. Keep hoping in him that God is able to move in your life that you're not going to know how he's going to move because he can, he'll, he'll blow your mind and he'll get the glory. And then once he does that and you realize how much he can do because, because he moved in my life when I was 14 years old, I at 38 years old, I know what he can do. He's done it before. And then in your next scenario in life, when you, it feels hopeless on all sides, you can tell your testimony. You can remind yourself of the testimony of what God has done in your life. And you can also tell others to build their faith, you know, to, to help and inspire them to keep trusting in the Lord, you know, that God's going to give them a testimony of his goodness, you know, and that this thing will spread like a wildfire. We'll all know of the goodness of God when we are called by his name. 
and he is faithful and he does not abandon his own. He delivers us. You know, it's amazing. Also in Leviticus, I finally got to the very, I finished Leviticus. And, um, (laughs) and so, but in the very end of this, I was reading about Jubilee, the year of Jubilee, not, and, and, you know, how God releases those things that are bound. If, you know, they, you know, his, his own, like the slaves are set free in the year of Jubilee. I will be right there, Aria, but like how things are set free. And it's just such a beautiful thing, such a beautiful thing how God does that and how God honors his people and how God chastens his people. Hi, Aria. But so my kids are calling me and I told them I would make them pancakes. So I'm going to fulfill my oath and obligation. (laughs) So anyway, thanks for joining me, Amber. Um, And I hope you guys all have a really blessed day. Lord, give increased faith. Help us to stand firm in you in this in this crazy chaotic world that we live in help us not to lean on our own understanding but to trust in you in your power god that you can do all things lord jesus and we love you god we thank you in jesus name amen all right bye